legs, guys. So this is a special night because for the first time ever, Dylan is actually missing from action on our show. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's just, oh, we're going to miss him a lot this episode. And we are very excited to have him back next week. Thanks, Spadoni. <laughs> and so I thought to myself, if Dylan wasn't here and I could make the podcast about anything I wanted, what would I do? And so this is a special episode of the Downtown Podcast that's all about 3D <laughs> printing. So you're going to learn how to get started in 3D. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I wish, I wish, but yeah, Jackie's still here, so I will, I will behave. But we do have two really awesome ladies on our community segment this week. And the first person I'm going to be speaking to is Sarah Hoffman, and she runs Zumba at the Container Park. And if I remember rightly, you just came from running one of your sessions. Yeah, I literally just ran here. Okay. <laughs> so, so for those who don't know what Zumba is, what exactly is it? Um, it's a cardio dance class with lots of Latin music, salsa, reggaeton, belly dance. Basically, all of your world music put into one playlist, and we just have a bunch of Zumba instructors rocking it out on stage, and everybody loved it. So I actually was told it was, we broke two records, uh -huh. loudest music in Container Park, <laughs> and um, most people for fitness class. I love this. How long have you been running the classes for? Um, well, it was our first class tonight. Oh, at Container cool. Park. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, yeah. so you got a really good turnout and like the records are broken and everything. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> Great. So like how often are you going to be running these classes? Every Thursday night at um, 7.15. Uh, time may change when it gets warmer out because it's pretty <laughs> hot tonight. Um, but we hope to add classes in the weekend and in the mornings as well, like super early in the morning before it gets hot. Yeah, I don't know about you, but getting up early in the morning and doing like dance kind of exercise, I can imagine how, how pumped you must be. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Day, right? You have to have like the Zumba alarm clock. <laughs> Play the Zumba music as soon as you wake up. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm not very good at getting out of bed in the morning, so I dare say that that would probably get my blood pumping for sure. Yes. That and like a cup of coffee, which I'm drinking right now. May hire somebody else to teach those classes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So if people want to get in touch with you um, further about this to, to find out if they forget when the classes are or anything like that, how can they contact you? Um, Sarah at BokwaFitness.com. Um, my name is Sarah with no H and Bokwa is B-O-K-W-A Fitness.com. Fantastic. Well, yeah, I, I wish you all the best with the classes, and I hope you continue smashing records for volume. That sounds <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Um, did you want to give the, the group a demo or anything like that? If I can have you play the piano, I can teach a salsa lesson. Mm -hmm. Does that sound good to you guys? Will you stand up and do What do you think, thing? guys? Do you want to do a Zumba class right now? Yeah. 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 Thank you. Um, our next guest, while we're waiting for everyone to sit down again, is, um, so we like to have cross cross sort of um, promotion of the different podcasts that are happening in town because we are a podcast. So we've had people like Sin Shop on before, we've had um, Don't Sweat the Tech on before, and now we're going to be introducing like a brand new podcast, so I'm very excited, and it's a podcast for entrepreneurs, which is even better. So I'm here with Shilpi, and she's going to be talking about her new podcast called In Over Our Heads. So what exactly is In Over Our Heads? Um, so In Over Our Heads is a podcast I started with my friend who lives in Detroit. Um, so we're both recent grads working for startups in new entrepreneurial communities and we get put in situations where we have no idea what we're doing or talking <laughs> about often. Uh, so instead of pretending, we decided to start a podcast and start talking about it um, and bringing on guests to ask for advice. So uh, we're actually kind of local. We actually record over Skype. 
<laughs> That's awesome, really. Yeah, but I was really inspired by uh, seeing Jackie and Dylan when I moved here in August, so it's been really fun. It's wonderful to hear that we've been inspiring podcasts, and I'm sure we will have a lot to learn from you guys too, considering <laughs> that you do this over long distance. So is it just a voice podcast or is it a video podcast? Like Right now we're just this. voice. Okay. Um, we're thinking about doing something in person whenever we get together, um, even if it's once a year. But right now we're recording over Skype. Um, we get to watch each other, but the audience just listens. Uh -huh. um, we're on iTunes, which is really exciting. Oh, great. That's awesome. So uh, we have some listeners, hopefully uh -huh. getting some more. <laughs> so how many episodes have you done so far? So we've done six. Mm -hmm. um, we started in February and learning every time. It's getting better and better. <laughs> <laughs> well, ours kind of started like that too. We, we've changed the format on, of ours so many times and I'm sure that you'll kind of run into the same thing as well. Are there any other lessons that you've learned so far with recording voice podcasts? Yeah, you have to, we do this thing where it'll be all three of us um, on Skype and you kind of have to point to the next person who's going to talk next just so we don't interrupt each other. <laughs> That's great. Um, generally, my co-host and I both enjoy talking and are mm -hmm. very, mm -hmm. e we're very easy to interrupt each other and we often have a guest who gets cut off, so <laughs> we try to use pointing to, to indicate who's next. That's actually a really good way of doing it. I find that Dylan and I sometimes talk over each other and we've, <laughs> we've gotten to the point where we have to rehearse. Okay, so like you're going to say this now and you're going to say this now, so I bet it's really hard. What kind of guests have you been speaking to so far? Um, so we're both part of a program called Venture for America. Mm -hmm. um, so he's a fellow in Detroit and I'm a fellow here and because our community is very close. We started with people, fellows and people in our program who know us well and let us me mess up a few times. So <laughs> we didn't have to feel bad about it. But we're starting to bring on entrepreneurs from both Detroit and Vegas and all types of mentors that we have in our community. So That's really excellent. Cool. That's super awesome. Good for you guys. Yeah. So like if people want to listen to the podcast or subscribe or like maybe want to be part of it, how can they find the podcast and then how can they get in contact with you? Yeah, absolutely. So the two best ways, one is on iTunes, search for in over our heads with no spaces. It's the only thing that comes up. Um, and then the podcast website is shelbyandmike.weebly.com. Awesome. That's super easy to remember too. Well, that's great. Well, I'm, I'm definitely going to go home and listen to your podcast and subscribe. <laughs> I'm always interested to see kind of the different angles that people present about entrepreneurship, particularly in this town. So yeah, and Venture for America is a, a fantastic institution. So yeah, thanks for coming on the show and talking about yeah, it. It's awesome. Cool. And uh, that's all for this week, guys, for the community segment. Thank you. TV. I celebrate holidays all the days every day on YouTube. For example, if you didn't know, today, April 10th, is National Farm Animals Day. Woo! Yes, yes. And this holiday was created by one Colleen Page, who is, is a, she's a celebrity pet expert, and she's a vegetarian. And she created this holiday to raise awareness to the slaughter of farm animals. So you can celebrate that way, or you can be like me, go to a steakhouse, and you can get a filet, medium rare. That's how I like my steak. Also today, if you didn't know, is International Safety Pin Day. Yes! That's right. Now, what's cool about these holidays and celebrating them is I get to learn some history, some education. I'm going to educate you a little bit on the history right now of the safety pin. So there was this guy named Walter Hunt back in 1840-something, okay? And he had a debt, this guy Walter. And he had a $15 debt. And he was stressing out every single day about this debt. He, and he was a mechanic. And he was like, how can I pay off this debt? I'm going to make something. So he invents the safety pin, right? And he's like, okay, now I'm going to sell this. And if I can sell this and make some money, maybe I'll pay off my debt. And he does. He sells it for $400, which in, in that time is equivalent today to $10,000. So he's like, wow, I made some money off this thing. So then he pockets the 385, he pays off the $15 debt and goes off on his merry way. But the company he sold it to was smart and made millions and millions and millions of dollars off the profit of the safety pin that he sold for $400. Now, every time you use your safety pin or see one, you can be like, oh, Walter Hunt, he kind of got screwed, but hey, he did pay off his debt, <laughs> right, right? Okay, so, 
every day there's a food holiday. Every single day. Go to food.com and you will see that. Today, for example, is National Cinnamon Crescent Rolls Day. Who doesn't love a cinnamon nice. bun? You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. And April takes it a step further. April is Food Month. National Woo! Food Month. Who likes food? Yes. Yes. <laughs> As I mentioned last week, it's also irritable bowel syndrome month. <laughs> so yeah, so some, so right, so food may not like you, but you probably like food. Well, guess what? Our sponsor today is all about the food. Yep. This is Ellie, who invented this amazing app called Fridge, which you yep. co-own, right? Right. With your brother Scott. Yep. It's National Sibling Day today. It is. <laughs> who has a sibling? Yep. Yeah. Give it up for the sibling. And also your husband, Justin. Right. It's the three of you. It's a family operation, which I think is awesome. Yeah. I've seen this app. I think it's, I, I'm not just saying this. It's brilliant. Thank Inform you. them, give them the 411 on Fridge. Okay. So Fridge is an all-in-one kitchen app that basically generates recipes for you based on what you already have in your refrigerator and your pantry. So it's really easy to use and it's just, I mean, that's what anybody needs, right? So it's really, really awesome. And you said your pantry too, because yeah. um, April 26th is National Herb Day. And if you say herb, I don't like you. I find that really <laughs> annoying. Um, so it's, you say herb, it's like a British thing or something? Well, herb, herb. Uh -oh. whatever, whatever. <laughs> okay, so um, it's not just about what's in the fridge, it's about like everything, yeah? Right, yeah. So it'll actually incorporate anything you have in your kitchen at all. So in your pantry, your spice cabinet, your fridge, anything. Okay, yeah. I love it, I love it. Yep. I'm just curious, by the way, um, what if you're like a novice in the kitchen? Or what if you have like dietary restrictions? Can we use your app? Oh yeah, absolutely. So fridge is just super easy to use and it's for anyone, whether you're a professional cook or whether you're like me and you have absolutely no idea what to cook except mm. toast or something. Um, so what it does is it filters the recipes for you. So it can filter basic things, just like how many people are you feeding that day? Or like, what do you feel like? What are you in the mood for? Italian cuisine, Mexican cuisine. But then it'll go a step further to filter really specific things so like allergies that you have or even any diets uh, diet restrictions like you said mm -hmm. that you might be on um, so like gluten-free or vegan or vegetarian anything like that even prep time it can do so the filters really give you specifically the recipes that are right for you in your exact situation prep time so you're in yeah. a rush you got to cook yeah. the kids fast it tells yeah, you like something this. under 20 minutes love it that's yep. amazing that's yep. brilliant who yeah. here has allergies anybody have an allergy yeah yeah I see Kyle what's what's, what's your allergy Peanuts. Peanuts? Mm. Oh, that's sad. <laughs> Who else? Who else has an allergy? What's your allergy? You. What's your name? Jason. What's your allergy? Peanuts. Oh my god. Oh my god. A lot of peanuts. Wow. Anybody? Who else is allergic to peanuts? <laughs> Anybody? Nobody? Okay, good. Um, so, uh, April 23rd is Take a Chance Day. So I just feel like, you know, you have the app and if you're yeah. like a novice in the kitchen, you're afraid, take a chance. Yeah. Just make something. And don't just make grilled cheeses. No. Even though April is Grilled Cheese Month. Ooh. And even though in two days is Grilled Cheese Day. This oh, true, wow. not lying. So I need to um, download this app immediately on my iPhone. Is that possible? So in three to four weeks, you'll be able oh. to download it on the iPhone. Okay. But right now it's available for the iPad. So if you just go to the Apple um, App Store, mm -hmm. then you can download it right on your iPad right now. Nice. Yeah. I like that. Um, so, who has, who has an iPad? Anybody? Yeah, you all have an iPad. Okay, yeah, if you have yeah. an iPad, give it on you. Yep. Um, so now, if you're if you're in your kitchen, how do you do? You just, is it like like overwhelming? I have all these ingredients. I got to put them into this app, or is it? How, how does that happen? Yeah. So right now, you will just input them. So you'll just put in like I have one a gallon of milk, or I have whatever in there, and you just put it in, and then it feeds into the app. Mm -hmm. But actually, we're releasing an update soon, and the update will actually incorporate a barcode scanner. So a that'll barcode make it, scanner. Yeah. So that will make it even easier. Yeah, yeah. That'll make it really easy because then you'll just scan the barcode on each individual item when you come home from the grocery store. And How there cool you is go. that on your app yeah. on your phone? You freaking have a, a barcode and you like yeah. Heinz ketchup is just one barcode for yeah. all the stores. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, April 23rd coming up, we have National Picnic Day. You're like, why is Matt Holiday talking about National Picnic Day? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why. Because when, when I think of a picnic, I think of that picnic like feeling, right? Yeah. The, the blanket and the grass and the serenity and your loved one. So, Aww. but then I was thinking about <laughs> the, the basket and what, what's going to go in the basket. You know, that's, that's, that's like prep. That can be laborious. But yeah. your app to me reminds me of a picnic, but the good kind of picnic feeling. Because you can sort of take all the ingredients and then put them in the basket or put them on the kitchen table. Yeah. Your app is like that picnic-like feeling we all love. You guys make it yeah. easy for the picnic, for every situation for cooking. I love it. Thank you. Check out Fridge. Yeah. Have a happy holiday night. And yeah. I'll see you guys soon. Yeah. Beat Bums. Beat Bums. Downtown Project. Downtown Project.
Hashtag.